I feel like seller board is Amazon FBA's best kept secret. You don't really hear much about it online. You only really hear about it if you work in the field professionally. First time I came across it and I learned about its power was when I was working full time in an FBA aggregator. But I want to show you what it does and why you may feel like you need it. And today specifically in this video, I will show you how to set it up so that you can take an honest look at your online businesses PL. After this, if you feel like you want to try Sellerboard and make sure to use my affiliate link, you can find it down below for you to get two months of a free trial instead of one. I, as I was just saying in my walkthrough, the other video I made about Sellerboard, the most invaluable feature of Sellerboard, I think is the fact that it pulls data straight from Amazon, including all of the fees that you pay, even things that usually you don't know, all of the return, how much they cost you, all of the PPC and puts everything into a profit and losses declaration for you to be able to really see how much these things cost you. So you would never know, for example, how much goes into refunds for your business. You're only usually looking at sales and oh my God, this month I sold 4.8K, but actually I, I didn't know I had a refund of 1.1K. That is very important because it impacts significantly your overall final margin, which, yeah, I made 4.8K, but actually your, my margin was negative and my return on investment as well. This is so important because it is very revealing of the business's actual operational health and the real performance. But actually, how do you set it up? This is the goal of this video. So you go to your seller central account and you go to app services, manage your apps, you authorize a new developer. And when you're in your account, seller board will give you the called developer's name and also the developer ID. With that, you input that, you click next. Seller central will give you your merchant token that you insert into seller board you authorize it and then the things are connected. It's that simple. And when you go back to your apps, you will find seller board in the list. This is what it will look like. The second thing you need to do in order for this PNL to work well is for you to load the COGS, the cost of goods sold. So how much you pay to your suppliers for each unit of each good. Because yes, seller board pulls your sales, for example, but it cannot guess how much this product actually costs you to source. So you go to the profit tab, you go to products and you will insert your products one by one. And when you come to this tab, you will find already your products there because seller board already connected and pulled the information, but you will find that your cogs will be zero, which is absolutely wrong. It doesn't cost you zero, unfortunately, to buy one product, one unit to your supplier. I will demonstrate with this one that it's still zeroed out. So you have two options to load the cogs. One option is to use the constant, meaning sourcing one unit of this product costs you always the same. So let's just say this costs me one euro to source and that's it. It applies this VAT. Whenever people return the unsellable returns, I make zero out of it and that's it is already computing that my profit per unit that I sell is 193 based on the FBA fees, based on my current price and based on all of the fees that Amazon charges me basically to sell this product. That's okay if you want something quick, but I would recommend that you use instead the buy period slash batch slash marketplace feature. If you click on it, you will have the option to define how much does it cost you for each of the marketplaces? Let's say that you have a um, different supplier for Germany or for France or uh, simply cost you something different for some reason. Therefore, you can define how much it costs you for each of them. And or at the same time, it costs you something this in this batch, but maybe in the next batch, your supplier will increase the price. So you will add a new period and you know my new batch will arrive and will, will start to be sold from March. Therefore, I will say that from March until I define a new batch, a new period, my cost will actually be different than what it was before. It allows you to keep super accurate control on your costs. You can also define 
multi-channel in case for some reason selling on FBA costs you sending your product the products you sell on Amazon cost you something different than what you sell on your Shopify or on your eBay let's say you know that each unit costs you 1569 you add here this 1569 per one unit for product costs besides that I have to pay handling fees and these are 174 per one unit and we work with Chinese suppliers usually it works a little bit differently so for example in my account what you will find is that I have product costs 2,900 euros or dollars for a thousand units that's how I input it and then it still computes that each unit costs two euros 90 cents. I think you having the flexibility to do one way or the other is great because maybe you have different situations for different products. That's how you insert the data for your COGS. It's really, really easy. And the last thing you need to do in order for your PL to be complete is to connect with your PPC API. And it works very similarly to what I described in the first place, but actually all you need to do is come to the PPC tab and press a button because you already allowed the API uh, from Sellerboard to connect to the API of Amazon and then you just need to allow it again so that it goes into your Amazon seller, your campaign manager and extract that data as well. And then you can see how your campaigns are performing and also have your PPC numbers um, extracted from your profit and the aggregated view. And with those three steps, super easy information that you already have for sure at your disposal, it allows you to have a view of the PNL per product, but also overall. This is information that usually it's much harder for you to pull yourself and to figure out. So for example, it would be harder for you to have the overview that in March 2022, you had actually a significant negative profit. And where does it come from? It comes from Amazon fees. Why? Which Amazon fees? Because there was a significant amount of inventory missing from inbound. So they lost 2.8K of your inventory. That would be very hard for you to compute on your own or you'd have to be really strict with your Google Sheets. So looking at January, for example, we have again negative profit and it would be also harder for you to figure out that your negative profit comes from actually refund costs. Your reimbursed amount, so the amount of people that actually return your product, caused you to have a negative profit in January. It's also information that is important for you to know that after your peak season, you will have a lot of people that return your goods. Therefore, you should not be shocked and you should compute that in your projections. Other features that I think are important in seller board are the money back feature that allows you to keep track of lost and damaged inventory in case Amazon loses something or damages something that you are entitled to get a compensation for, your returns or in case Amazon decides to change your FBA fees for some reason. Again, if you would like to try Sellerboard after this demonstration, then make sure to use my affiliate link. You will find it down below for you to get two free months instead of one free month as a trial. Now, in this video, I showed you a little bit more about Sellerboard's features and how everything works. So make sure to watch it afterwards if you still want more information.